I'm Tony Ruiz of Gold Derby here with Laura Schiff and Kerry Audino, the casting directors, Emmy nominated casting directors of FX's Shogun. And, and either one of you can take this, you know, uh, uh, Carrie, we were talking beforehand is that there's, I think maybe there's this misconception about what casting directors do. Can you kind of shine a light on, on that? What do you think the misconceptions are versus the reality? Well, I mean, I think one of the major misconceptions, especially for people that are not in the business, is that, you know, we are the ones that do the picking, that we're the ones that are in charge and sort of like the gatekeepers of actors getting jobs. And the truth is, it's, it's super collaborative and we work in conjunction with directors and producers, you know, and the showrunners to choose the cast. But we're, it, we don't have the final say, but we get to curate who they see, certainly. So, so Laura, with with that in mind, what was kind of the starting point uh, for for this show? Well, I mean, Justin and Rachel are very, very knowledgeable about Japanese cast, Japanese actors. That was one thing that made it much easier, and also meant they had a lot of strong opinions, um, and so that was great. So in, in terms of deciding who they're going to see, sometimes Justin would say to me, oh, what about this guy that was in this movie? And I would have to track that person down. Sometimes it was even someone I didn't know because they had never worked outside of Japan. Um, but it meant it means gathering up choices from all over the world. We had casting directors on to help us in Japan, obviously, in Canada where we shot. Also at one point in London, also at one point in Portugal. Um, so you're doing a really huge worldwide search for these characters. And we are the hub for, for all of those other choices that are coming from all of those different places. So, you know, Kay in Japan would send us um, choices and we would go through them and decide who to flag for Justin. Justin and Rachel were getting these um, simultaneously. So sometimes he would look or they would look together um, at those as well. And then I would get choices from Canada, from Maureen and Colleen. I would get choices from London and I would put them all together and kind of flag uh, who I thought were really worth watching in a more, you know, serious way. And sometimes, you know, they would like people I hadn't even flagged. And sometimes, you know, it really short handed it so that they didn't have to spend all of their time watching everything. So what is it? So, so when you, so when you two work together and, you know, you've worked together before, uh, what is that? <laughs> for a long, long time. <laughs> yeah. Before. Yeah. 18 well, years. Well, what is what is that collaboration like? How do you two work together? It depends I, totally on the project. Yeah, it does. Some, I, some projects, it's, you know, we split up roles and you take this and I take that. And uh, some we're, we're doing everything completely collaboratively. And some projects, you know, Laura will cover and another project separately I will cover. So. And when we're covering a project like that, we still might meddle and say, yeah. oh, you have this role. Have you ever met so-and-so? Or I saw this person recently and you should really see them for that part. Or, yeah. or hey, I'm stuck on this. Do you have any thoughts? Um, but and sometimes it, it is really 90% one person. Sometimes 50-50. Yeah. Exactly. And, some, and certainly before the pandemic, you know, we were in an office and we were very much involved in each other's day-to-day -day on projects um, in, a, in a much more uh, fluid way. The pandemic sort of changed the way, um, like all of the office communication worked. So, was there a particular, like for example, let's take Toronaga. You know, Hiroyuki Sonata. You you can't imagine anybody else in that role. Was was that a, a decision? Did that come from Justin and Rachel? Did that come from you guys? I have to say, Hiro was attached before we were. So he's an <laughs> actor. He's the one actor that was set before we even came on. I don't think they were wanted to move forward with it until they knew they had that role because that role was so important um, and needed to be, <laughs> you know, but also it's like, it's it's not a 
25 or 28 year old guy where it might come out of left field. There's only a certain number of guys that could handle that part. None as well as Hero, but some could try. Um, but I think they needed to know that they had that before they moved forward on the project. Uh, what about Anna, uh, Anna Sawai, who, you know, is just a revelation in this whole, uh, in this project? How, how did she come about? Uh, just through massive searching. Um, she has a manager here in, the, in Los Angeles, and he reached out to me, and I thought it was a great idea. I mean, at that point, she had done Pachinko, but it wasn't out yet. And she had done the Fast and the Furious movie. Um, but you know, she was not a household name, but we were really searching high and low. That is one role that we looked for everywhere. And in fact, that was the reason we put on someone in London because we wanted to look there as well. And, um, so that was like looking high and low and turning over rocks. And when we found her, I thought maybe this is the one, um, and then we still went through struggles because it wasn't, you know, it was during the pandemic. You weren't live in a room with people. People were halfway around the world. Sometimes you weren't even able to get on Zoom with them. So it was like, I'm going to send this person an email with some notes and hope that they understand what I mean and ask them to retape. So there were, I mean, Anna auditioned several times. Um, but in the end, you know, she was the one. Yeah, and, I, I mean, that, better than we could have ever imagined. Well, that I think is such an interesting thing because, you know, the pandemic has, you know, permanently, I think, changed the way that casting happens now. I feel like, is it more common now that casting happens through, through self I, using the word tape? <laughs> I, I would say so. Yes. Um, I think in some ways it's becoming a little less common because people are anxious to get back in the room, but people got used to it. And I think producers in, you know, are very busy and a lot of producers sort of liked that they didn't have to be present in a room, um, you know, every week for casting. Um, so I think some of that stuck, um, you know, and I, and I, I hope that it comes back around more and that we get to be in the room with actors again, because you know, you can't beat it. You can't beat being able to give notes live. You know, you can't beat the connection when you're reading with an actor live. Like it's just, you know, it's a, I think it's a huge part of our process that is, uh, that was hard to not have. Right. I a hundred percent agree. Although there are some things that came about because of COVID that stuck that are benefits. I mean, we Absolutely. were able to see people all over the world in a live zoom room, you know, regardless of where they were. I mean, there was a, an actor who was in Greece at the moment. We wanted to see him shooting a movie and we were able to read him and talked with him and spend a lot of time. We did callbacks for Blackthorn with, you know, with people all over the world, Australia, London, everywhere. Um, and, you couldn't do that before. So there's some little silver linings. Was there a was there a particular role for this project that was particularly hard to cast? I mean, Blackthorn was hard. <laughs> In some ways, Blackthorn was hard because there were just there's just so many wonderful actors in that age group, like where do you start? You know, there's so many great choices and you have to see what works and narrow down and narrow down. I would say, um, you know, Marika was a huge challenge. Eventually we found the absolute best perfect person, but it took a long time to get there. And it was hard because she has to speak flawless Japanese as a, she has to speak native Japanese but she also has to speak English well enough to be understood by our audience, to be understood by Blackthorn, and to really, so you could really understand, you know, buy her as that translator. And we met a lot of wonderful, wonderful Japanese actresses who 
didn't speak English or didn't speak English well enough. So it narrowed down, down the pool a lot. Um, the Father Alvito part was also, I mean, that's a unicorn. You need, you know, a Portuguese piece, priest who speaks fluent Japanese. And we have all seen you know, stuff on television where the person seems to be speaking great Japanese and then a Japanese person watches it and says, what are they, what are they saying? Um, and so to find someone who could really do that was really, really difficult. I mean, we always talked about how it as a unicorn, this fantasy thing that might exist maybe somewhere. Um, Ted Nobu Sano as, as Yabushige, Tell me, that character became such a breakout. Um, did you know, how, how? where in the process did his casting come around? That was maybe the easiest part to cast because- Really? Justin, well, because Justin, I mean, we saw a lot of people and it was a struggle, but Justin always was saying, what about, what about? And um, so got to give credit to Justin for that one. How do you know- I mean, obviously you're looking at tapes and you're, you know, looking at, you know, maybe some of their other work. What is the, what is the, the moment where you, is it like an impulse? Is it like a, an intuition sort of thing where you're like, yes, this matches, this is a possibility. Carrie, you have thoughts on that, on what, how that magic happens? Um, I have thoughts. <laughs> on a, can you ask the question? Well, how do you know? Is it intuition? Is there just like a moment where you you look at a person's picture or you look at some work that they've done where you go, yes. Oh, yeah. It, how, how do you know? I think there are there are sort of these magical moments in casting where you get to where you have that feeling. Um, where you just look at someone's read and go, Oh, this is it. Like a this it, it must be this person. Um and sometimes then you really, you know, get yourself into a situation with producers where they're like, why are you pushing so hard for this actor? And you're like, because I know that this is the guy. I know that like if you buy into this and invest, you're going to be so happy you did. But, you know, it, it, there is a part of our job where it's like, you know, it's creative, but we have to get people on board with what we see sometimes. They see something different or their idea of what they thought it would be would be different. And I do think that that's a really cool part of our job that we sometimes can change the way a character was originally shaped um, by casting. You know, they take that actor and go, oh, this is cool. This is cool too, and maybe better. And sometimes an actor does that for us. You for know, sure. it's, we are, we think we're looking for one thing. And then all of a sudden we see an audition. We're like, oh no, it all along it's been this and we just didn't know it. Yeah. And I mean, that's, I mean, and that is sort of the ma one of the magical parts too, to get to see actors bring things to life in a way that we hadn't imagined. Um, it's a pretty special part of things, I think. But yeah, that intuition is also why we do what we do. Hopefully, yeah. hopefully that's why we get hired is because we have that intuition and we've been right before, <laughs> you know? Yeah. And like, you know, though sometimes the longer you work with producers, they trust you more and they go, well, if you say he's great, he's great. And we'll do it. And we'll do it. And then there's other people that, you know, as you're getting to know them throughout the process, start to trust you more. And, you know, once, once, you know, they see it filmed, usually once it starts to air, they're like, oh, that guy was great. I'm like, yeah, well, yeah. Oh, hopefully they're <laughs> saying that once they're on set with them. <laughs> yeah, you're, uh, yeah, on set for sure. But, you know, I, usually when it all comes together, they're like, oh, well, okay. Yes, it's always a good sign when you get dailies and everyone's excited. Well, you know, I think there's this kind of, uh, you know, you hear from actors about going into casting rooms and things like that, but somebody, a, a different casting director once told me is that, you know, we're always rooting for the person that comes in to be the right person. Every single one of them. Every single one. And, yeah, I mean, and so always, what? Go ahead. I, I always tease actors that, of course, we want you to be good. If you're great and they cast you, we can go home. I, I don't really want to go home like that, but it's, we want every single person to come in and be great and show us something special, show us something that maybe we haven't seen before. 
it makes us look great. It makes our job super exciting. Um, exactly. I, yeah, gives... If they, they make us look good, if they're good, we're rooting for them a hundred percent always, you know, and actors think that, you know, it's scary with us, but it doesn't have to be. It's not, not on our end. We're trying to support you. We're trying to make it great. Right. And, and there might be actors that I'm rooting for before the auditions start more than another actor, but I'm rooting for them in the way of, oh gosh, I hope they're great. Not, oh gosh, I hope they get the part. Right. I'm not rooting for one person to get the part. I'm rooting for every, everyone to be great, but there might be someone who, you know, I've seen before and never gotten to cast, but I always think they're super interesting and I can't wait to see what they bring to it. So in that way, I'm rooting for them. But I'm again, I'm rooting for them to be great, not for them to get the part. Sometimes we're rooting for them to get to the part, to get the part. Sometimes. Well, certainly after they read their ones, we're rooting <laughs> for them to get the part. But yeah. um, but before we're very open to whatever happens, whatever, I mean, you know, whatever happens in the room and whoever brings something that we haven't seen and that we we feel is the right thing. Well, I think you've both given us kind of a a, a a kind of a masterclass of 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 what casting actually is and what it isn't. And uh, congratulations to both of you on this on this nomination, uh, one of twenty five this year for Shogun. Um, everybody, go to goldderby.com, make your predictions for the upcoming Emmys, and stay tuned for interviews with more nominees in the coming weeks. Laura Schiff, Carrie Audino, uh, congratulations! Thank you both so much. Thank, Thank you. you.